headed to Oahu's Chinatown to visit my buddy Andrew Lei, the chef and owner of Pig and the Lady. Andrew, a first-generation Vietnamese immigrant, combines his family's history with local sourced ingredients to create culinary identity that is equal parts Vietnam and Hawaii. This rendition of the lunch menu is just uh, uh, heavily inspired from our last trip to Vietnam. It's such a beautiful country, the food is beautiful, the people are beautiful. It's hard not to be inspired by that. It's always crazy to go back to and see where your cooking style, like the roots of it, right? Uh, for, for me, it's like, I'm Filipino, but I cook Hawaii Filipino. Yeah. Is that something you do? Like your Vietnamese is like very like Hawaii based and oh, it's yeah. crazy to go back and see it? Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, so like when we're in Vietnam, we met this 100-year-old bar master, yeah? And like... Wait, um, the guy was 100 years old. He's 100 years old. Still cooking far. Yeah, he's like this tall. He was this tall, but now he's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We go to his place, it's in, it's in um, Ho Chi Minh City. And his shop's been there for like about like 70 years, yeah? And then uh, we're just talking a story with them and it's insane, like the history of, of, the, of his journey. And then he took us to the back and he had one giant ass, like, wood burning stove. And like a pot, like seriously can fit like four of us, like built into the stove. And then like, um, like it was just boiling stock, right? I asked like, oh, how long has this been cooking? And I thought he was gonna say like 18 hours, 24 hours. He was like, I've been cooking this for 60 years. Like non-stop. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and then after How that- How do you replicate that yeah, shit? Yeah, and oh. after that we, we tasted it. You know, I was like, oh crap. When we went back to Philippines, we were searching for adobo. I'm, yeah. man, for all my life, man, my dad's been making adobo. Uh -huh. And he's always talked about my grandma's way that he make it and nobody learned how to do it. Yeah. And then I watched how the guy from Ilocos Norte did it. I made my dad taste it for the first time. He's like, this is the closest that it's ever I've ever tasted adobo to, to grandma's one. Really? And it took good, you know? But that's the craziest thing about food, right? It's, it's history in a pot. This is the most important and significant like expression of like our family, of like of my heritage. My like my Vietnamese heritage side, so it's like I might as well just go for it for lunch. Yeah, you know, you want to taste some? Yeah, totally. This is called Phu Pho, so it's just lamb shoulder, uh, Ni Hao lamb, and then marinated with a little bit of lemongrass and curry spices, and then uh, braised with some tomato and carrots. <laughs> like that? Yeah. Yeah. This is. Coming from central Vietnam, this is called uh, Bung Bo Hue, which is like pork. This one we use a uh, pono pork from uh, Wai Nai side. Hold on, let me give you a little bit of the fat. Hold on, hold on. You need a little bit of fat. That's important. That's important, though. Mm. It's like bright, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this one right here is uh, soup from Hanoi. This is made with uh, crab and shrimp. It's called uh, bun jiu and has a lot of tamarind in it. Mm. Yeah. And this one is called ku jiu, which is like Cambodian and Chinese influence. And it's like Vietnamese saimin broth. So this one's been cooking for about 18 hours, not 60 years. <laughs> there you go. This is my soul food right here. That's a dish, you can feel it, Ren, once you taste it. Isn't cooking awesome? Andrew prepared me a bowl of South Vietnamese kuko made with stewed ni i hao lamb, curry spices, and tomatoes. the whole family involved with the restaurants? My mom comes in, still comes in every day, tastes the soup, you know. If it's no good, then you get the slap on the head, <laughs> you know, fix it now. Um, 
And then um, if it's good, she says nothing. So you're always in a constant state of, am I, am I doing it right? <laughs> <laughs> and so during the uh, Vietnam War, um, my mom was a college student and my dad was um, an English translator for the Special Forces in the US side. My dad was, uh, you know, doing whatever everybody else in Saigon was trying to do, just escape, right? And um, he didn't have any connections. He wasn't like a high-ranking officer. So he would go to the embassy like every day, um, stay there for like from morning to night, just like at the gates trying to get help. And then he just, you know, by chance spotted like a black car and it was an American car. Window went down, right? And he's just like, I speak American, I speak English, I speak English. The guy in there, um, um, gave him a, a note and said, go to this gate at this time, uh, you have two hours. By the way, my mom was nine months pregnant at the time and then uh, carried her to the embassy. That plane was supposed to be going to like the uh, Midwest and um, my mom um, just so happens to her go into labor pain. And so they landed in Hawaii and then they went to Chopper Hospital to give birth to my oldest brother, that's Anderson. Um, and then the plane left. And that's how we ended up in Hawaii. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. insane, right? How nuts is that story? Bro? Yeah, yeah. And then we just found out that like our family was the first Vietnamese refugees in Hawaii. Oh. Yeah. Wow. And, no wonder it gets so much so in the in the uh, I know. of all of that, right? The, all those layers. <laughs> yeah. When you peel when you peel it back, man, that's what so cool about the food, you know. Okay, we, we came here for yeah. to showcase the food and all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then as as the conversation goes on, you dig deeper and you it's see deeper, the layers, deeper, yeah, yeah, yeah. Layers of it. And if you're gonna do something for the rest of your life, right? Like it better better mean something. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, so that's what it is for me. Being from Hawaii and then being from Hawaiian, what does that like translate to you as in your food mm -hmm. and growing up here? Mm -hmm. So I think for I guess my my perspective is that I'm a first generation uh, Vietnamese American. Mm -hmm. I wasn't raised very Vietnamese actually. I was raised in a very American way, I guess. You know, they wanted their kids, my parents wanted their kids to kind of like integrate very seamlessly, mm -hmm. you know. But as you get older, you kind of start to question, it's like, I'm a little confused. <laughs> you know, it's like, am I American or am I Hawaiian or am I like Vietnamese? I don't understand, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And so like for someone in my situation, it was just kind of like trying to find my footing, you know, or, or like where I belong. Hawaii is where I was born and raised, and Hawaii is wh what I I known for like 25 of the 33 years I've been around. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and that's that's what I kind of identified myself as. But when I started picking a lady, it was like kind of like a exploration of my own Vietnamese heritage. Yeah. Um, and then that was through food. And then just recently when we went on this trip to Vietnam, it was about like getting the story right. Now, to other people, I, I cook Vietnamese cuisine, but to me, I cook Hawaii cuisine. And it's just my, my view. And I think, you know, we have the luxury to be able to express that, that like I can have my view of Hawaii food and you can have yours. Like in this bowl, for example, right? Like the, the lamb is, sourced from uh, Niihau, the carrots are sourced from pit farms in Kunia, the calamansi was picked from my backyard, uh, the culancho is from Trang farms in uh, Haleiwa. This bowl was made from Mark Kuhn in uh, Hawaii Kai, you know, and these noodles are uh, made in uh, on Manakia Street in Chinatown. <laughs> I, can, I can take a lot of pride in like being able to replicate these flavors, right? Most of the work is being able to find the co-producers, you know, 
that to make something like this happen. It's so old school. Like the, that's what you do. You cook your community. Oh, you go down and the uncle down the road will get the pigs, or you had pigs in your backyard yeah. and. And they had the eggplants, yeah. so you know that that's where they, they make the noodles. So that's where I'm going to go get the yeah, noodles, yeah, not yeah. Oh, what is on sale at the supermarket. Yeah, I yeah, have that. yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So. And so, like, this my Hawaii community made this happen. So to me, it's like oh, this is my my Hawaii food. Yeah, yeah. Like my special place. Stoked that I get to show it off. <laughs> I got my honey hole in the back. <laughs> Here's my patch.